Hey everyone. So in this video, I want to go over what's new in .NET Interactive in the latest preview and mainly just kind of go over the cool things that the team has been doing and showing that off what they've done in VS Code. Now, they said that you need the latest version of VS Code Insiders, which is the preview version for VS Code. So just download that and install it. By the way, when you do that, it's a standalone install. So you have your base VS Code install and then the Insiders install so it doesn't mess with the current install of it. All right, so once that's started, we can go to our extensions and then you would download the .NET and write the notebooks extension here. And once that's installed, we have a few options in the command palette to work with our notebooks and our kernels. So we'll create a new blank workbook. And if you don't have .NET Interactive installed, it will install it for you. All right, so we have a blank notebook. And real quick, their keyboard shortcuts here are a bit different than what I'm used to in, in Jupyter. So I'm gonna to go to the Open Keyboard Shortcuts Preferences. And in here, just go to Notebook to search for all of those. And there's two of them that I changed. First, to execute cell, I change the control enter. I think the default is control alt enter. And then, uh, where is it? To insert cell, the code cell below, I change that to B. And I think control enter is the default for that. All right, so first thing, we can tell what language we have here. And we can, if you want F sharp, JavaScript, or PowerShell, or Markdown here, I'll choose Markdown. And we can go over a couple of those new .NET interactive features that was shown in this blog post here just a couple of things and one cool thing i like is that we have this nice collapsible button here and our, our headers so the main thing that this new update for donut interactive allows for code sharing so if i have a c-sharp variable here execute that you have a nice indication of that the cell is completed and how long it took to run and I'll change this to F sharp and we can use the pound exclamation point share and we want to share from C sharp and then we want to share that hello variable and in F sharp let's say create another variable called world and then open system and then use console.write and then I'll print out these two variables hello and world there you go. So we got this hello variable from C sharp within an F sharp cell here. Another thing we can do is that we can create hard, kind of hard coded values from other data. And we're using the value from the pound exclamation point. We give it a name. Let's say we call something users. And we just give it kind of a key value pair here. So ID be one and I'll say name uh, John execute that and then let's say we want to use Newton self to kind of parse out this data for us and from JSON into and this object so we call the object users oh, and we are still in F sharp here so let's change that it's a public string ID then another string of name. And down here, we can say using Newton soft, JSON. Then we do that share the user's variable from a value. And then we create an object using JSON convert that deserialize object into the user's object with the user's variable. And then we can console We'll just do right here. Do the object ID in the object name. And it's still on F sharp. There we go. So we have the data from this value, and then we can share that into another cell. And another thing we can do is instead of kind of that hard coded key value pair that we used, we have a couple of other ways that we can do. We can do from a file or from a URL as well. I do from a URL here. 
I get from GitHub, give it a name, call a site, and then do that share from value site. I can use the built in display function from the text from the site and say text HTML, and it brings back the HTML that it got from this URL. So that's just a couple of cool things that you can do with some data to kind of play around with within your .NET interactive notebooks. Another thing I want to show is just how well this .NET interactive VS Code notebook experience is using ML.NET. So we do kind of a sample here. And I'll bring in from NuGet, Microsoft.ML, and Microsoft.ML data that analysis for the data frame API. All right, so I've got those installed. Let's bring in some namespaces and let's create our context. And notice just how one thing, how nice the syntax highlighting is in VS code. And also the IntelliSense is way better in VS code than it was in an actual Jupyter notebook. So load in bank.csv so that it has a header and the separator is semicolon. And we can call preview on here and get the column view. There we go, just to verify and load the data. Let's start to build out our pipeline here. First, I want to get the string columns. And instead of data that's schema, we can do data that columns. And do select the column name. We'll filter out all of the numerical columns. So, so we'll create a new array here of some column names. So age, balance, day, duration, campaign, p days, and previous are numerical columns there and where the current column name does not contain either of these and then i'll do two array on that next we can split on our data here context data test train or t train test split i always want to say test train split pass in the data test fraction i like to do 20 percent and next, build out our pipeline. First, we do a transform. We will convert the type into a label column from our default column. And if we look up here, uh, where is it? Yeah, here, a default column is a string, and it's a no or yes. So we want either 0 or 1 for that instead. And we need to give it the Microsoft ML data data kind here and it's going to be boolean and i'll append another transform where we do featureize the text into a text column and that's where we use the string columns that we did before but this overload here for a, an array of string columns it takes in a text options object so i'll create it up here There'll be a new Microsoft ML transforms text text featureizing estimator dot dot options. I can bring that in here. Yep. Next, we'll append on a couple of concatenates. First, we'll concatenate into a features column the age and balance columns. And next we'll do that second concatenation into that same features column, but we'll pass in the previous features column and then the text column into that. And then last we'll append on our binary classification trainer. And then here I'll use the one of these logistic regression trainers here. And because we have a label column and a features column, we can leave the parameters here, the default. 
and we can create our model using our pipeline fit and pass in our train set. And from there, we're going to run cross validation, use context, binary classification, cross validate, and then pass in our test set in our pipeline. And then we can get our average from a cross validation sets, get the average metrics area under the curve from all of our runs there. And we have this semicolon here, so it's a statement. If I remove that, it'll give me the output in the notebook. So 90% area under the curve is pretty good. And because we're in a notebook, it's good for pretty easy kind of experimentation. Uh, so if you want to change our trainer and see what another this other logistic regression looks like. So we run that, do a fit on to create our model. You know, this one took 18 and a half seconds, which is uh, quite a bit more time than the previous one did. We run cross validate on it and then cross validate to 12.6 seconds. And let's get the average here. The average actually went down to 80 by 88 percent. So now we can just we put this back to where we had it, get our model again, cross validate on that, and double check it again, still 90%. So now we have our model. Let's do some predictions on it. And for this, we need our input and output schema classes. So I just paste those in. We have the bank data input class and the bank prediction output classes. And to create a prediction, we need to create that prediction engine using context model create prediction engine with the bank data and the bank prediction classes and pass in the model. And I have a couple of data items here that we can test on. And let's predict on that first item there using prediction engine predict on that new item and then prediction and predicted label. So this predicted label is from the label that we use, which is the default. So it tells if the customer is more likely to default on their loan or not. And this one says that they are likely to default on their loan. So if you look at data here, is a 22 year old person who's an entrepreneur. They're single and have a balance of negative 900 in their account. Now if we do this to the another item that we have, it says false that they're not more likely to default on their loan. And this person is 44 in management, married, and has 4,200 in their bank account. All right, so I hope you got a good idea of .NET Interactive Notebooks within Visual Studio Code, how, how nice it is to work with. And honestly, any future work I'll be doing with .NET Interactive will be within VS Code here. So a really good job to the team that done a lot of work and made things really nice. So hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.